Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is your host, uh, Christopher Corey with Shadow Stecklin. So I wanted to go over um, security software and uh, webcams and uh, IP cams and everything that you can use. Obviously there is a lot of options out there at this point in time. You, know, you can go ahead and do anything from like one camera to, you know, several hundred cameras if you're running like a business or like out of your home or if you're using this for like your small business that you have like a store for just kind of depends there's pretty much everything in between obviously there's several different nvr which is network video recorder options out there so you can build your own box there's obviously built box solutions that you can go through um, like through Costco or some electronic store and obviously there is um, companies you can go through like ADT and uh, several of those security firms have their own options as well personally myself I'm not gonna pay a subscription to a company to go ahead and manage that for me especially if it's something that I want to follow and use personally myself because of privacy and security reasons, especially if I want to have cameras inside of my home. It's one thing if it's outside, like guarding a garage or your back door or your front door or something of that nature. But if you have webcams inside or IP cams or security cams or anything of that nature on the inside of your home, then you definitely run into uh, privacy and that's you know, kind of a gray area at this point in time. You're basically paying a company to essentially have the option to spy on you. I'm not saying that they will, but the option's there, and I'm just not going to do that. Uh, obviously, I'm more technical savvy than some people may possibly be out there. I'm no expert, obviously, but there's a lot of options. Uh, when it comes to um, security software, uh, NVR software, network video recorders, there's quite a few options. There is the popular ones that you see usually are like Blue Iris, uh, Zone Minder, and then there's several others that I'm probably forgetting the names of right now. Uh, obviously your mileage will vary and it's basically personal preference and what works best for your setup. Uh, personally myself I'm using Blue Iris. Uh, I only have two cams just because I'm in a small um, apartment so I don't really need anything too terribly crazy. These were IP cameras that uh, I was fortunately given by someone that I no longer needed. Um, they were using it to monitor inside of their home their um, grandma because she was very old and uh, had health issues, but unfortunately she passed away due to age, um, health, things of that nature. Very sad situation, but uh, I digress. Uh, and because of that, I was given those cameras, so they're just basic uh, 720p, 1080p uh, IP Foscam cameras that I have set up. One is wired and one is wireless, monitoring my living room, which is where my main desk is, and then my, obviously, front door. Uh, I used to be working where I was traveling quite a bit, so it was kind of nice to have those set up. Um, personally, like I said, I use uh, Blue Iris. Uh, Blue Iris does allow you to have up to 64 cameras with one license for 70 bucks. One-time fee, pretty simple to use. It scales very well. Obviously, when you are building your solution, you need to make sure that the hardware will support the amount of cameras you have. Obviously, the more cameras, the higher the resolution, the more hardware that you will need in order to go ahead and support said cameras. Like I said, mine's pretty small. I'm using two cameras. If I had a home, I would probably have you know, five or six cameras, a couple inside, uh, outside, front door, you know, like garage, back door, things of that nature. So five or six cameras. But again, I digress. Like I said, it's about 70 bucks a year excuse me, 70 bucks one-time fee, that license um, does go ahead and stick with you. And if you do decide to move to uh, different hardware, different setup, things of that nature, you definitely can work with them to transfer your license to another um, solution. Now, there is a couple ways you can run this. You can run this as its own box. 
using either Windows or Linux uh, operation. And then, of course, you can also do this in a virtual machine. Uh, originally, I was doing this through a virtual machine and through Docker container on Unraid, but I ran into performance issues. And then also, um, obviously, I needed to dedicate more resources than I was willing to in order to use it. So I have this set up on a low-end i5 NUC, which works as a standalone Windows machine, which is quite nice due to the fact that the NUC has a built-in decoder for video. So I don't have to have like a dedicated Windows machine with like a dedicated video card in it. But again, my setup is pretty small. It's two cameras, so nothing too terribly crazy. Works really well. I will do a very short, uh, brief demonstration of mine. Obviously, I'm not going to go into too much due to privacy uh, reasons. Sec here. Obviously, I've turned mine off for uh, privacy reasons, but I do have my uh, cameras set up. Now, these are uh, dedicated IP cameras. One is wireless, one is wired. And basically, you would already have the assumption that those cameras are set up and configured to the IP scheme of your network. And then you would go in and configure each camera here as to um, what it is. So whatever IP scheme port, uh, obviously you need to port forward it if you want to be able to access it outside your network. Uh, one of the things that I have done is this does have the ability to be able to view um, remotely, but I do not have that uh, set up. For privacy and security reasons, I do not want to have access to this outside of my network. So if I do need to view, I can definitely go ahead and uh, VPN in, and then I can check and do whatever I need to. Obviously, I have alerts set up that will alert me and send me a photo or video. Now, those alerts that you can do, you can do this with any software. So, let's say you go out of town, you can have it set up to uh, pan, tilt, zoom, depending on whatever camera that you have, and then you can set up an alert that will state, you know, hey, when this action happens, or a event happens to where it shows like some movement that it will start a record. Or you can have 24-7. Obviously there's pros and cons. 24-7, if you decide to record absolutely everything, that is going to take more storage, so you will need to take that into consideration. I have my uh, recordings being sent to my main storage server, a share that I have specifically set up that only Blue Iris has access to, and of course I can view this inside of Windows. Uh, obviously I don't recommend having that share accessible from the internet for security reasons and privacy. And then of course you can have it set up to, um, if it sees an event, like a person walks by inside of the view of the camera, that it will start recording. However, pros and cons with that, uh, pro, less storage, con, possibly it may miss something. So if you do need that for, um, God forbid, you know, if someone breaks in or you have to contact the police or something, you may not have the needed evidence because not everything was recorded. So pros and cons that you have to take into consideration. Uh, really powerful um, software. Um, like I said, this will scale very, 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 very well, depending on, of course, whatever your needs are. I mean, you can do up to 64 cameras. That's more cameras than most medium size businesses unless you have like a giant giant like warehouse or building or multiple floors or something of that nature so pretty awesome now of course like I said earlier depending on the amount of cameras that you have will determine how many your hardware and uh, what you need mine's set up and basically it's on my NUC i5 um, I think eight or 16 gigs of RAM with a 120 gig SSD. So nothing too terribly crazy. Probably pick that up for like three, $400, small, portable, really easy to set up. Uh, one of the things I would also um, recommend doing, and you can do this inside of the Blue Wire software, is you will go into the setup and then, uh, let me find that. 
not always in here. Uh, no, not group settings. Uh, sorry guys, I'm not an expert at the software. I set it up basically and forgot about it. Ah, here we go. Um, so basically, um, you can do the system name here. Um, this is where you would activate your license and then, of course, check for updates, things of that nature. Um, clips and archiving, you can have it go ahead and um, basically save, store, limits you can do, um, etc. Users, if you wanted to create multiple users to have access, it does by default have a web server enabled. Obviously, you would have to port forward that on your router and give that the correct information. But what I wanted to show is the startup. So what I would recommend doing is if you are going to use this as a dedicated NVR, I would set this up as run as a Windows service, which is right here. And then also um, you can set it up to basically as soon as it boots, it will boot in when you say run as a Windows service. If this machine ever needs to reboot, um, loses power, Windows updates, any of that jazz, when you restart again, it will restart the BlueWire software. So let's say you're out of town or something happens. You don't have to worry about it. It will automatically come up and you are good to go at that point in time again. Um, you can do inactive um, for hours, temp, times, triggers. Uh, profiles of operation so certain times of the day like let's say you're at home there's obviously no need to record sometimes you can set different priorities and parameters there uh, you can do schedules uh, email servers if you want to email alerts I need to um, set that up again I had to do a reinstall recently due to the fact that my machine had some issues so I need to set that up again. And then of course FTP servers, uh, multiple devices if you wanted to connect this to like an Amazon Echo or something crazy like that. Um, you can definitely open up uh, serial ports. There's, there's so much that you can do with this. If you wanted to get like a um, joystick or one of those special um, like broadcasting devices, you can set up like uh, control through those devices. Uh, there's macros, you can do audio recording uh, over cameras. Uh, you can set up various different alerts. And then basically when it comes to adding cameras, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you can group, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. You can have, you know, a group of cameras, like four cameras for the front, four for the back. I mean, basically whatever it is that you um, want to do. I have mine uh, monitoring, like I said, my front door and also my um, living room because that's where this desk is and where most of my gear is. So that's obviously what I want to be able to see. Uh, basically, that's kind of a really brief, uh, short overview of the uh, software. Uh, I think that it's a really good software. It's really simple, really easy to use, uh, especially when it comes to Windows. It's basically, you know, just like any other software, you install it, you um, give it an admin rights. Obviously, it needs to um, run as administrator and you want to make sure that it has the proper permissions during install if this is on like a domain or like a work um, work group, things of that nature, you need to make sure you have the correct permissions. I like it personally. I think that it's worth the $70 for the license, especially when it gives me up to 64 cameras. This device will travel with me. I'm always going to have it um, once I get in and can buy my own house later on down the road or rent or whatever the case may be at that point in time I can transfer this license to a bigger machine I can build a dedicated server for it which a lot of people do it just really it, like I said it scales really really well uh, like I said I know this is kind of a brief really quick rundown of everything. If you want a more in-depth uh, review, you can definitely go ahead and reach out to me. I do stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 
link is in the uh, description and also on the bottom of the um, screen right here which is my nick of Shadow Wolf KK. You can go ahead and check me out there. Also, if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me on Discord or social media. And I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Make sure to like and subscribe.